Hello and welcome to the Invicta FC preview show. I'm Laura Sanko and breaking down these fights with me today is a member of the ultra elite UFC double bonus club. Of course, I'm talking about UFC lightweight, the James Krause. James, we're back home in Kansas City for Invicta FC 18. We thought, you know what, why not bring out the big guns for some in-depth analysis and here you are. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm really excited uh, for this card to come to Kansas City. There's some really good fights on there, some title contention fights, uh, some fights built for the fans. Really, this card overall, if you are an MMA fan, this is the card for you. Well, I know you're used to talking about UFC fights, but we're going to expand your horizons a little bit today. The first matchup of the night is a featherweight bout between Kansas City's own rising star, Megan Anderson, and UFC bantamweight vet, Peggy Morgan. Now, full disclosure, you're going to have a little bit of bias on this one being Megan Anderson's coach. But So let's not talk about predictions. Sure. Uh, just talk about the fighters themselves and where you see each one of these athletes wanting to take the fight. Yeah, from a, from a fan perspective, I think that both of them bring some really good stuff to the table. Megan Anderson, she is a dynamic striker has really good range, uh, very good power for, for a female, and especially at that 45 pound division, she's got two stops in a row. So she's really, she really looks to, to make this a really technical kickboxing match and look to finish on the feet. Uh, Peggy is a little bit more diverse, she's purple belt in Jiu Jitsu, but also a uh, high volume striker as well. I don't think she has the same power as Megan, but she's a little bit more dangerous on the ground. So both of them bring really good stuff to the table. I think this is going to end up being a kickboxing match. Uh, Peggy's super durable standing, and she's not afraid to get in the pocket in exchange. So I'm really excited to see what happens when both these girls come out and start slaying. Well, it certainly has the potential for Friday the night, in my personal opinion. Um, now moving on to a little bit further up the card, we've got a jockeying for position type of fight, in my opinion, between Cindy Danwa and Jessamyn mm -hmm. Duke. Now, Dandua had really good success her last outing at Featherweight, but she's dropping down to Bantamweight to face, to face Jessamyn Duke, uh, who unfortunately has been kind of on a skit. She's dropped the last four of her fights. What do you think Jessamyn needs to do to right the ship and get her career back in the right direction? This is a, a classic striker versus grappler matchup. Uh, to answer your question, Duke needs to make this a technical kickboxing match. She is the far superior kickboxer, and I think Dandua knows that. She, makes, uh, she doesn't hide behind that at all. But Duke needs to come out, establish the range early, work behind the jab, uh, stay out of the clinch, and, and really make this as technical as possible uh, in, in terms of striking. Dandwa needs to do the exact opposite. She needs to get in the pocket, uh, work to initiate the clinch, maybe work to the fence, uh, get this fight to the ground somehow. Whether she's on top or bottom, I don't think it matters. I think she's a far superior grappler than Duke. Uh, but I think. The, the winner of this fight is going to be whoever dictates where the fight goes. If it's standing, I'm going to take Duke. If it's on the ground, I'll take Dandwa. Well, I think it's really pretty critical at this point that Jessima Duke gets a big win. And for Cindy, you know, she she's often said that she feels overlooked in her division. So a win like this, I think, would create that momentum that she needs to really cement herself in the conversation about top Bantamweights. Now, two fighters who are new to the Invicta conversation but who have momentum in spades are Poland's Agnieszka Niedźwicz and Brazil's Claudia Ray. Both of these fighters putting their undefeated records online. Yeah, uh, Niedźwicz and Ray both come out they come out fast. I think they 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 both have undefeated records and only one decision between the two of them, I believe. So they really come out fast. They both have a fairly diverse uh, finish rate. So they're hitting submissions, they're hitting TKOs. Uh, so I'm really excited to see which one of these which one of these girls comes out. They're both kind of relatively unproven in terms of Invicta fights, so I'm really excited to see which one of them comes out and establishes that that uh, dominance within the Invicta cage. So that's really important. You know, whenever you hit the lights, whenever you hit the 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 different stage, the higher level, it changes. So one of these girls is probably going to step up and and really take a hold of that and 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 look to dominate that in in terms of pressure, in terms of um, the in cage pressure, in terms of the cameras and all that stuff. Well, it definitely has fireworks written all over it, on paper at least, but there's always a little bit of a question mark when you're talking about two fighters who haven't fought a lot outside of their home country. And that weight class in general, you know, there's a little bit of flux going on at the top there. We've got Barb Honchak, who is currently the title holder. You've got uh, Jennifer Maya, who beat out Porto mm -hmm. for the interim belt. And then you've got Roxanne Mataferi, who's been asking for a title shot for quite some time now. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, who kind of ends up in that top three mix. Not so at Bantamweight, though. There is absolutely no question about who is in charge at 135, and that's Tanya Evinger. Breathing down her neck, though, are Mexico's Irene Aldana and Invecta FC newcomer Tyler Santos. Yeah, um, once again, I'm really excited for this fight. I think this is one of the, the dark horse matchups of the card. Uh, both of these girls, when you watch it, they just they have that, that extra flair about them that they want it, you know, and I, I don't think this fight is going to be any different. Uh, this fight means a lot to both of them, and they both need to come out and establish uh, that dominance that we've talked about, the, the in-cage dominance. And I think both of them have great things that they bring to the table, but 
it seems like we keep talking about this is the forward pressure, the cage control, and and I think that's going to make the difference in this fight. Uh, I think both these girls are going to come out and look to, to to push forward early, look for the strikes, maybe set up a takedown or two. Uh, but I th I think these girls want this fight so bad they want this win they want that title shot and I think both of them are going to come out hard for it well regardless of who gets their hand raised at the end of the bout I think Tanya Avenger definitely has her hands full in her next title defense and we're here the main event features strawweight Alexa Grasso versus Jackson Wink product Jody Escabel now Jody fought most of her career at 105 and she's coming up to 115 to fight Alexa Grasso um, what do you think about this move up to 115 for her and how do you think she's going to hang with someone the likes of Alexa Grasso yeah, I think she's she's making that move up to 115 to, to work her way into the UFC, and really a win over Grasso would, would really make the argument for that. Um, both of these girls are very similar. They are very, very high volume strikers. They put together good combinations with punches, kicks, mix in takedowns. Um, both of them close range very well, and to me, they're very, very similar fighters. That that they want to come out and they want to explode with their strikes. They have good power. Um, they're pretty complete strikers, really. I mean, they have a very diverse uh, striking arsenal, so I'm really excited to see which one of these girls, you know, the difference. You know, maybe the difference this time will be a takedown or the clinch game or something that normally you wouldn't see. You have to make that adjustment within the fight, so uh, I'm excited to see which one of them has the better game plan and which one comes out, you know, and makes that adjustment. Well, Jody's definitely a very explosive fighter. She's got all the tools she needs, but she she already had a little bit of a reach disadvantage at 105. I think it'll be interesting to see if that's even more so, you know, at 115. And Grasso just, she's not a fighter who's shown any exploitable weaknesses no. to date. No, if, if I'm uh, Esquivel, I am looking to, to close the distance, strike, do your normal thing, but look to win rounds, you know, close out, close out the round with a takedown. Uh, just keep everything diverse, keep the strikes uh, going, mix in your takedowns, mix in the clinch, and really try to find that chink in the armor of Grasso, because like you said, there's really no, no uh, glaring weaknesses as of right now. Well, I'm super excited for that fight. You know, despite the fact that we don't have any belts on the line in this card, there's a lot going on in terms of momentum, relevancy, home weight class, and the all-important number one contendership spot. So. You guys are not going to want to miss a minute of the action. You can tune in live on UFC Fight Pass, 8 Eastern, 7 p.m. Central. If you're in the Kansas City area, you can come out to the Scottish Rite Temple. Get tickets at cagetix.com. Once again, thank you to 810 Sports Radio WHB for letting us crash their studio. For Invicta FC, I'm Laura Sanko. He's James Krause, and we will see you next time on the Invicta FC Preview Show.